All right, let's practice another linear regression. Um, so we're going to look at the size in square feet will be x. So those would be my horizontal for x. Um, so those are the square feet of a house. And then the price in thousands of dollars will be y. So that'll be up and down. So that means like 605,000, right, is really 605,000. Sorry, 1,000, yeah. So 605,000, right? Not 605. Uh, so I already made the scattergram for you. Should we do linear regression? Is the scattergram kind of a line? Yeah, the scattergram is roughly linear. So regression seems appropriate. So linear regression seems appropriate. So let's go ahead and do linear regression. Um, and I'm gonna actually show you how to check your work. Um, just because it's really easy to make a typo. So this is not something you could do in like real life, right? Because you would collect your own data. But in stats class, we can at least check for typos. So I already entered the data. So go ahead and enter the data and then meet me back at L1 and L2. So stat edit, L1 is always X, L2 will be Y. Um, so then once you're ready, um, come back to the video and I'll show you how to check your for typos before we do regression. So before we do regression, we can use this piece right here to check for typos. So this is only to check for typos, no other purpose. So we're going to go back to that menu. This is basically our favorite menu, stat calc. Um, and you see two var stats. We're not using two var stats. We're just using it to check our work. So tell it to look at L1 and L2. Um, and then if you scroll down, it's over for me, but down for you. Um, you'll see this number. X, the sum of X times Y is 27755410. Cool. All right. We don't really care about this menu other than to check for typos. Um, if you want to just risk it, go for it, right? But this will make you feel a little more confident that you entered the data correctly. But otherwise, we'll go back and we'll do linear regression. So go down to 8 on your calculator. If you happen to be using this app, it's 9, but I don't think most of you are using this app. Um, and we like the backwards one. So do A plus BX, not AX plus B. So I don't really like this one because it's the opposite order. So I'm going to go down to this one. Tell it to look at L1 and L2. And we get A is 229-355-7645, and B is 2311-402. I'm writing everything down, and then we'll round before we write the equation. 402719. So rounding has to do with my Y values again. So we're going to go back and look at those Y values. So I would choose the one with the most digits. So I would choose these two over like 980 has three digits. We want to choose the one with most. So we're always comparing to Y values. So my Y values have what? How many decimal places? They have zero decimal places, right? So that means my Y intercept needs one decimal place, because that would be one more. So one decimal place would be the three. We're not counting digits. Decimal places are after the decimal. And we'll round that. And then my um, slope goes by digits, not decimal places. So these numbers have four digits. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So we have four digits. So that means we need five digits. So five digits. So zeros in the front don't count. One, two, three, four, five. Um, if you hate these rounding rules, just keep a ton of decimal places. You can always have more. You just can't have less. So y hat is equal to 229.4, because we're going to round up because of the 5, plus 0 0.23114. 
x. Don't forget the x. And that's my regression equation. So, would it be wise if we were curious about a 6,700 square foot house? Should we use the equation? I'm leaning towards no and why. If we look at the houses so far, we have like 1,500 square feet to 3,500. 36 is the largest. So 6,700 uh, 6, square feet is way outside the data range. For x's, because we're looking at square feet. Um, this was called a extrapolation. And it's likely that the pattern might change, might not continue. The pattern may not continue. Right, 60, uh, 6,700 square foot houses might follow a very different pattern than 2,000 square foot houses. So I'm not even gonna bother plugging it in. It's unwise, right? We shouldn't do it. So no, it is not wise. All right, one final example. Um, we have these things called outliers. We've talked about outliers, but it's slightly different here. Um, there's kind of like two types of outliers. Um, so outliers are, um, outliers, sorry about that. Outliers are data values whose y values don't fit the pattern, whose y value doesn't fit the pattern, the way I wrote that sentence. And then potential influential observations, that's a handful, so we call them PIOs for short, um, as a data value with an x value far away. So both of these are kind of far away, um, but in different ways. So outliers don't fit a pattern, um, PIOs might fit the pattern, they're just far away. Um, both of these types of values can have a large influence on the equation, so it's important to make sure they're not errors. Um, but if they are not errors, you probably should keep them. But let's see the difference. So a, an outlier is one that doesn't fit the pattern. So kind of there's the pattern. Yeah, this one's far away, right? But this one doesn't fit the pattern. So the one this would be the outlier. Versus the one over at 20, it's far away, but it fits the pattern. That would be an example of a PIO. So hopefully that helps with the difference. And yeah, I think that's it. So we might try to think of reasons for outliers later. So a, like why for this green point, why is it so much lower, right? Like a real life reason, um, but we'll see that later. Um, so I'll see you back for section 4.3. Don't forget to let me know if you have questions.